Mike's good. You can have a seat. Can you give us a brief explanation of what's going on with your voice? No. I'm Jamie Dupree in Washington, splitting the differences in a lawsuit over Hillary Clinton's Clearly emails. large black clouds of smoke coming right over from the Pentagon. I said all throughout the hearing, being in the hearing room, through the testimony of Judge Thomas, through the testimony of Anita Hill. I compare it a lot to Arnold Schwarzenegger when he ran for governor of California. I think this race by Trump is very, very similar to that. You plan that spends $1.1 billion dollars to now. set up a committee to investigate the Benghazi attacks. Donald seven. Trump won all 50 of the delegates that were As handed for what out happens yet. next with the U.S. and Iraq, the schedule tells the story oh, today. Maybe terrorism time. not only in Europe, but here in the U.S. as well. I'm Jamie Dupree in Washington. so much, Mr. Speaker. I would like to talk about Jamie Dupree. I've had the privilege of knowing Jamie for more than two decades. With his professional coverage of both congressional and national politics, Jamie has become a trusted voice for radio listeners in Atlanta, as well as in my home state of Florida. His mind almost works like a supercomputer, where he just analyzes things and gives you very logical answers. And I say he's a great journalist because no one can ever figure out if he has an opinion on a story. The reason Jamie thinks it's so important to be neutral is that it doesn't matter who's in office, it doesn't matter who's in power. Whatever's going on in Washington is a story that needs to be told. So if you don't have a dog in the fight, all you're covering is the fight. And that's what Jamie does so well. Jamie is one of the last real shoe leather, take notes, old school reporters. You check his social media and the station's social media, 70% of the reaction is fully, Jamie is the only one I trust anymore. He understands how DC works better than any of these politicians who come in and out of the town. He knows it through and through. In fact, he knows more in his little pinky than most people who live a political life will ever know in their whole bodies. When it comes to content, um, Jamie really brings it, especially in a political situation where you know you've got two sides, you know, each you know pounding their chests on both sides. He he splits it in the middle, and um, you know what you're going to get is down the middle. It's not it's not weaving to one side or the other. A lot of people have used the word inspiring to describe you. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? Um, 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 bull. He had been a radio news reporter for one of the other network news services, and he joined Cox back in 1989. So I was working assignments at the time in radio, and his responsibility at the time was covering uh, the lawmakers from the Georgia delegation. And so that's how we sort of got to be friends. 
and have been friends now for going on 30 years. I was one of the program directors at our station in Dayton, Ohio. So I would talk to Jamie on the phone and he would be a part of the radio station. But then after I got to WSB in Atlanta in late 2000, Jamie and I established a lot closer relationship because we decided to feature him more on WSB, kind of specifically on the Neil Board Show. Long before that, I was listening to him reporting from uh, Washington, D.C., and was already in kind of awe of him. And so the first time I met him in person, I'm sure it was something like, you're Jamie Dupree. He was, he, you know, he was such an important part of the show. I'd never heard of a reporter that actually knew the definition of the word objective and practiced it. And there's not many like him around. So that's what he brought to the show. Uh, uh, some sanity and uh, a little bit of credibility, a lot of credibility. The listeners loved it automatically. So it was a lot of times that noon hour might have been the most successful quarter hour, an hour on the radio station. So Jamie became more a part of the fabric of the radio station and someone I was directing every day and coaching every day. Jamie not only became um, an employee and a great comrade, but also really good friends and uh, colleagues for a very long time. Well, the history of me and Jamie Dupree started back in the early 1990s. I took over the hosting duties in Atlanta's Morning News in 1991. And we had this guy in Washington who was doing 30 second reports for us who seemed to be very knowledgeable and was able to distill things in, in just a half a minute that showed a real breadth of knowledge of how Capitol Hill works. And he called me one day and said, hey, what would you think about me just coming on once or twice a week and answering a question just to expand the reports a little bit? And I went, you know what, that, I bet that'll work. And boy, did it ever. So I came aboard, Jamie was our Washington correspondent, and um, what amazed me about Jamie was he was producing material for us here on the East Coast, but at the time we had uh, radio stations in Los Angeles. And I was always marveling at how Despite the three hour time difference, he still managed to be live on both coasts. And um, only somebody who loves what they do will they be live on both coasts and every day too and in drive times. I mean, it wasn't like a quick hit here or there. He was, uh, he was on and um, that's the mark of, a, of an old school uh, uh, news, news guy. And uh, he is that through and through. Channel 2's Jamie Dupree joins us inside the Capitol via Skype. And Jamie, you can see that debate right here on Channel 2 at 8 p.m. And it seems like we haven't heard from the Democrats in a while. Yeah, well, also, I'd say this, Carol, by having the debate on a Saturday night, there's not as much news media attention that will be given to it. Think of the example of this In the back half of the new news, every day, we would have Jamie live in the newscast, and we usually would have time to ask him two questions. And it would be questions about what was happening that morning, what was breaking on a national level, but was very much affecting our viewers locally. I think Jamie just has such a gift of just being so real and making it very understandable to the average person. Jamie will freely admit that he doesn't even vote in presidential elections. He was, he was raised up as an old school, hard-nosed, just the facts reporter. And he sees what has happened in the last few years as well. Capitol Hill is full of pundits masquerading as reporters. That's something that I think he'd tell you has gotten worse over the last few years. And he really sees his function as just telling you what's going on, but telling you straight, a little analysis as well, based on years of experience, telling you what people have said, what they have done, what it means, he sees that as his function, and as a result, after all these years, you see the reputation uh, that it has brought him, and it's well earned. Jamie is just one of those people you like to like, he's easy to like, he's a terrific guy, he's the most credible, accessible, respectful reporter and journalist I've dealt with since I've been in Washington. Members of Congress uh, uh, like to get interviewed by Jamie because he doesn't do any gotcha questions. I have no idea in this time of opinion journalism, whether he's a conservative or he's a liberal. I don't know what party he's registered in. I don't know anything about his political views. 
I like that Jamie Dupree reigns in, those of us who do talk radio and have very strong opinions, Jamie has this background and depth of knowledge and time in Washington where he's seen these cycles over and over. It's like a meteorologist who has seen a weather pattern for 30 or 40 years and can say, this reminds me of this storm from way back when. Jamie has that with politics. This political fight reminds him of this other one. And this is how that turned out, and it'll probably be the same way. It's a job to cover this and to explain it. I feel like uh, I'm doing part of my First Amendment job and helping people figure out what's going on. And to me, explaining to them what is going on out in the, uh, the primary states and the caucus states is a very important thing. And I, I do get a lot of angry notes from listeners who yeah. demand yeah. that I take a stand or demand to say who's right and wrong. You know, that's everybody's personal decision. I try to give you the facts and, and give you the flavor of what's going on, and then you take it from there. Now, of course, he has won the nomination, and we'll have to see where we go. But I would say you cannot underestimate him at all, even though there will be a lot of Republicans. A couple of years prior, he'd had another incident where we all get a cold, get the flu. You lose your voice. You lose your voice for about a week. You're quiet. You stay down. And it comes back. You're back good as new. He, he lost a lot of the depth in his voice over the course of weeks and then months. And the problem miraculously cleared up. And we thought, wow, we stuck by our guy and he's got his voice back and he was back and he was rolling. So then in 2016, when he started having voice problems again, we thought, oh, it's that problem again. The first problem was attributed to acid reflux. So we thought that, you know, for some reason, the acid reflux had reemerged again and he was going to have to have some deeper treatment for it. And that just like before, the voice problem that he'd had before would, would go away after a few months or a few weeks and he'd be able to talk again. But it didn't happen that way. Jamie on the air started sounding like he had a sore throat, then bronchitis, and then it just got worse. And I distinctly remember the last night he was able to be with us there as that 2016 campaign raged on. It was the night of the Indiana primary. And he knew he shouldn't really do it. He was too scratchy. He was never able to again. And, and not long after that, his voice was gone. It was just absolutely gone. It's never come back. Well, the timing of, of Jamie's voice problem was very significant because we were in the middle of an historic presidential campaign. Jamie, if anything, was just ultimately frustrated because there was so much nuance he could add to the story just in the way he, he was able to use his voice that he wasn't able to do that. So the timing couldn't have been worse. Donald Trump, you know, starting out his presidential campaign. Um, you knew it was going to be uh, a wild ride. Jamie wanted to be on that ride. And then his voice goes out. And he saw everybody. I mean, he went to Johns Hopkins. He went to Mayo. He saw the experts here at Emory. And nobody could put a finger on why it was that he couldn't speak until he finally got a doctor who, who gave him the, the diagnosis of the, the dystonia. So tongue protrusion dystonia, or tongue dystonia for short, uh, affects the tongue, of course. That's how it gets its name. And dystonia is a problem that describes a disorder of excessive muscle contraction. What happens is your tongue muscles uh, contract too much and don't do what they're supposed to be doing. It comes out of the blue. They don't have other neurological or medical problems that relate to it. Um, and we don't usually have an explanation for it. Unfortunately, dystonia tends to affect the body part that a professional uses the most. And so if you're a professional golfer, for example, it might affect the muscles that swing your club. If you're a professional guitar player, it might affect, you know, your hand muscles. Um, but in Jamie's case, I believe probably his work as a reporter, um, having to interview a lot of people all the time, is, has contributed to it. It probably didn't cause it because, of course, not every reporter gets this and not every professional person who uses a body part extensively gets this, Tony. It's only a few of them who get it. So we would all love to have a treatment for this problem. And we don't have that yet, in part because we don't understand the disorder completely. But one of the things we see with rare diseases is they tend not to get as much attention as the more common ones for obvious reasons. And so I think the research uh, could go a little bit faster if we had more attention to it. In a time where politics is 
where we need Jamie so much, somebody who can, who can be unbiased, somebody who you trust to give you the straight facts. You need his voice so much and his voice wasn't there. It, was, it, it really has, over time, has been a, a tragic event. How frustrated are you? Um, uh, about uh, more than Welcome to Take Your Daughter and Son to Work Day. This is what it looks like stuffed up inside the U.S. Capitol building. What do you think? Are you having fun? <laughs> yeah, Are you having fun? Okay. I don't know how much news will actually get covered today, but that's what it looks like today. So hope you had your kids at work as well. Say goodbye. Bye. Um, I want to... Um, to the extent that there's any luck in this at all, it's that uh, it's the social media, the digital age. So he was able to keep going through his blogs and through his social media. So we always had his presence. I would, I would read text messages or instant messages from him on the air so that the listeners would know that he was still with us. He would still go down to Capitol Hill. He would bring someone with him. He could write out the questions. The person with him could pose the questions. And because he's so highly respected uh, by both the backbenchers and the leadership in Congress, they would make time for him. He has a little white, uh, white board and he has those erasable pens and he will write out, you know, like budget deal, yes, no. So you, you know what the question is and uh, there's no pity. Nobody's given him an interview because they feel sorry for him. They just know that they're, they're gonna be treated well. The great thing about Jamie Dupree is his passion for his work. So yeah, he lost his voice. He couldn't talk. And there's nothing worse for a radio reporter than to not to be able to talk on the air. But Jamie found other outlets. So he launched a Twitter account, and he has tens of thousands of Twitter followers. He became more and more active on Facebook, where he has tens of thousands of Facebook fans who interact with him on the issues every day where he can present just the facts. So yes, it hurt us tremendously not to have his voice but we've always had access to his information, to his reporting, and to his perspective. He's, he's made sure of that. However, in spite of the severe health problem, Jamie has remained active through Twitter and his news blog. Mr. Speaker, Jamie Dupree is a perfect example of the positive role that devoted and professional journalists play in our free society, and I wish him and his family all the best during this most difficult time. Thank you, Jamie. Godspeed. I gave that one minute on the House floor, which is what you do in the beginning of the day. You can talk about anything you want for literally and exactly one minute. And, uh, and, I, and I spoke about Jamie Dupree. I was amazed at the number of people who, who knew him. It was an outpouring of affection and it just got the ball rolling. I think it was really clear how much Jamie means to Capitol Hill after news that he had lost his voice kind of got out when Congresswoman Ileana Ross Lehman went to the House floor and talked about Jamie and that sparked a Washington Post piece and a Politico piece and it really drew attention to what Jamie was going through that a lot of people even on Capitol Hill who saw him all the time still day to day didn't know that he was dealing with. Doctors say messages from his brain aren't reaching his tongue. A neurological disorder so rare, there are no specialists who treat it. The pen in his mouth helps him speak, but the reporter in him has not quit. It's hard, but um, I am working to come back hard.
I was at Google and we were getting a demonstration of Google Translate. And they were talking about artificial intelligence and how that can be used to create conversations artificially. And I was thinking about Jamie and I was thinking about how there must be a way to create a customized voice. And that was the key, to create a customized voice um, that would take a human's voice into account. We knew with technology and artificial intelligence that there were companies out there that were working on synthesizing the human voice so that people who could not speak would get their voices back. Adobe was working on a program and we got all the way to the CMO, the Chief Marketing Officer at Adobe because we thought what an amazing story this would be for us to tell, for Adobe to tell about how they were able to help a radio reporter reclaim his voice. The only thing is, once we got to that point, Adobe scratched the project because they were concerned that the technology would be used for untoward means. And so we were like, oh, because we thought we had something and then we didn't. So then uh, Marion Pittman, who's, who's on our executive leadership team and always has been a great fan and supporter of Jamie's work because she understands and appreciates great journalism. Marion got her staff rolling on deepening the search and being able to do it full time and, and, and be able to find um, someone who might be able to do this. And then Mike Lupo uh, from Marion's staff found Sarah Proc in Scotland. Doing some online searching, I, ran, I discovered um, the video of uh, the film critic Roger Ebert who lost his voice to throat cancer. Sarah Proc reassembled his voice, uh, reassembled his voice from old tapes, and basically gave him a voice after many years. Um, and I emailed them and said, "Hey, uh, let's talk about whether or not you can do this for our for Jamie, a 30-year veteran with a um, a great track record as a journalist." And they were they were thrilled to do it. So we started meeting with Sarah Proc, and they what they do is they take samples of someone's voice. They kind of put it into a, to, to talk like a layman, they put it into a big pot and they mix it all up and the consonants and syllables and the inflection all gets mixed up. And then when, they, when you type it in, it seeks out the best example of that, of putting words together. Sometimes it's the entire word. Uh, it may be that they have to connect different syllables to form words. The more content that you have that you can put into this that it can pull from, the better. I'm a woman of deep and abiding faith, so I'm just going to say right off the top that the Sarah Proc solution, in my view, is a total God thing. They were very interested in working with Jamie, and my goodness, we were thrilled to have the opportunity to work with them, except there was a problem. Normally we would record a speaker, record maybe for 30 hours in the studio, but we didn't have that possibility in Jamie's, uh, Jamie's case due to Jamie's current condition he's not able to come in to the studio and record our phonetically balanced scripts. So what are we gonna do? We're thinking, oh God, this isn't gonna work. No, yeah, it's gonna work. Why? Because Jamie is the most thorough and organized, I don't know, I may call him an audio hoarder, but he has audio archives of his own reporting going back for decades. And we sent Sarah Proc 250, 300 samples of what Jamie sounded like when he was creating a report. And from that, they were able to recreate his voice. First, before we get to the agenda, is there anything Jamie wants to say? Um, hello. <laughs> hello? Hi, Jamie, how are you? Yes, Graham, uh, thank you uh, for your help. And uh, I look forward to uh, all of this. So, Graham, I know you've, you, in preliminary stuff, you've reviewed this, but can you review what it is you need for us to send and in what format and what kind of advice you have about what we should send? Yes, yeah, so we need, um, the most important thing is good quality, consistent speech. Things that are read in a kind of newsreader style uh, is, is ideal. Graham, that's good and very important for us to know. This is Condis, and Jamie and I were talking a little bit earlier this morning. He's basically got three buckets of content that he has 
basically all of his audio material recorded since 2010. Great. And then Jamie has a question of how much audio do you guys need and want? I mean, is it, let's say they're 30 seconds each, is there any sort of quantity that is ideal? Well, someone did one yesterday, or the day before, and it took him about two and a half to three hours in total to record, so it was about 620 sentences. So, yes. if we say that in Jamie's average news report that he filed, let's say there are four or five sentences, we probably should send 120 of his news reports if he has that many. Yeah, I mean, even more than that would be would be good. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's the that's the positive. Is Jamie, like you like Conda said, has everything from 2010 and beyond. So we've got tons of material yeah. to, to pull from here. And Jamie, let me know you agree that the, the, between the two of us, we will, you know, you'll start the choosing and we'll figure out, you know, the two to two and a half hours of audio that we'll send over to the folks at Sarah Proc, right? And uh, Jamie, just to be clear, Condos will coordinate with you, but we are agreeing that you have all of it, so that, that process will be on you. So it's just a matter of, I have no idea how long that process will take. Yeah. Remember, Jamie says, Jamie says, yep, I want to run the show on this. How about I'll start working on it right now? <laughs> What is even more awesome than the fact that Sarah Proc A wanted to work with us, B was able to work with Jamie's archived audio files, and then C created his voice, is that Cox was willing to pay for it. And it was not, it was not a cheap project. Jamie was always a great uh, reporter. He always has been, and he's always been a big hit on our radio stations, but he is more than just a reporter. He's a great teammate, he's a great collaborator. And so for us, Helping Jamie was never really a, a question. It's not like we evaluated the cost and did a, a P&L on it and decided yes or no. I mean, there was never any question as to whether or not we were going to help him. He's, he's part of the family. We thought it was going to take a really long time. It didn't take very long at all. We probably started in the spring of 2018. And our goal was to get something that we believed sounded like Jamie, that he could work with, and that wasn't too clunky for lack of a better word, to get him on the air in time for the 2018 midterm elections. So in total, uh, it took maybe three months uh, to build his voice, because uh, once we have the transcriptions and the recordings, the process of actually building the voice is, is, relatively, uh, is relatively quick. Within a couple of weeks of sending them all of the snippets, they were able to turn around a first draft and, um, and the first build of the voice um, the first time I heard it, I thought it was okay, but it didn't sound quite like what I was expecting. And so Moise Khan, the business analyst that we had on this project, he said, oh, we can toggle with pitch and we can toggle with speed. And so I said, well, speed it up because Jamie talks faster than that. Once he sped it up and he raised the pitch slightly, it was like, that's Jamie. Obviously, at first, some phrases sounded better than others. But we felt strongly enough about it that we, we sort of committed, even with version one, that we, we would come up with a plan to debut it on all of our radio stations probably about three weeks after that. Jamie Dupree 2.0. The U.S. Supreme Court has basically punted on the issue of legislative gerrymandering, avoiding major rulings in a pair of cases, one from Wisconsin and one from Maryland, as the justices left open the underlying issue of the partisan drawing of legislative district lines. Be sure to check out Jamie's blog at WSBRadio.com where you can also read more about Jamie's new voice. We have 82 degrees on Peachtree Street, hot and muggy, afternoon highs around 90. We do have a 40% chance of one of those pop-up storms yeah. this afternoon. Damn, that is good. That is Channel good. That. Yeah. I'm Jamie Dupree in Washington. The memo of the president's phone call released by the White House clearly shows President Trump asking the leader of Ukraine to help with an investigation related to the son of Joe Biden. Democrats were stunned by the details with one saying this was When I first heard the voice in June of 2018, instantly I knew that it would work. But I was worried about the reaction from listeners. I was worried about what they would think. Mostly the reaction has been very positive with people telling me that they have cried in their cars when hearing me on the radio. 
But let's be honest, there are a lot of mean people out there too and not a week goes by without someone saying something awful to me on social media about my voice. No, it doesn't bother me, but I think about those people and I wonder just how bad their own lives are that they would make fun or denigrate someone with a disability. The one thing that I really miss though is the back and forth with our morning show hosts at our various radio stations. I miss being able to dive more deeply into stories on the radio and explain to people what is going on. Sometimes I wonder if my voice has been taken away during this crazy time of politics in order to preserve my sanity a little. <laughs> But I'm still here, everything is still working except my voice. My reaction the first time I heard Jamie Dupree 2.0 in the air, I teared up. I just did. This is something we haven't touched on. When I talked to Jamie about, you know, what, how does this affect you most? He says, I miss having a conversation with my wife. I miss being able to tell, excuse me. I'm a dad, so I understand this. I'm just being able to tell my children stories directly, and I hope one day I'm able to do that again. But until that day comes, this, this is kind of an interesting high-tech way to be able to at least speak to them. I think the, the impact it made on his personal life is best epitomized with the fact that when he first got the first sample of what Sarah Proc had built with his voice, the first thing he did was he sent a sample to his daughter because he knew that she would receive the text and was on her phone and would be able to pull it up for the whole family and I don't I'm paraphrasing what it was but it was hi this is dad this is the voice of dad it's good to be back I think he sent it to her and told her to play it with the whole family gathered around and they all cried on the phone together um, I mean that that was just an amazing moment um, even if we couldn't put him on the air, if we could have brought him that moment, it would have been worth it. To hear him back version two on the air, uh, I mean, it's, it's just wonderful. I mean, so many people just love that guy and they were in despair over what was happening to him and his voice and what might happen to his career. And I keep hoping and praying that one day he's gonna wake up and turn around to his wife and say, would you please turn down the damn TV? And then they'll say, damn! I just talked. I'd like to see that happen to him one morning. I hope that Jamie Dupree is able to give his wisdom for as long as he wants to, and I hope that's a really long time because we all benefit from voices of reason, particularly in a time with so much of what passes for information out there, to have Jamie's reason, quiet, clear wisdom is great. Today, um, I wanted to uh, present this award to you, Jamie, because um, you lead by example, you inspire us, uh, you delight our customers, uh, you're using new technology to reinvent not only your job, but, um, but yourself, and uh, you're an inspiration to me. Um, I think anybody out here would say you're an inspiration to them, and uh, I'm so happy to soon be hearing your voice again and hopefully be on the more long distant road to recovery. I know this doesn't solve all your problems, but um, it, does, it does do a lot for us and it provides hope um, in an area where we didn't know we had any. So congratulations uh, for being a, a phenomenal person. You know, this story has been about Jamie, but it's not about Jamie's ego. It's not about his, something that makes Jamie such a better person than anybody else. It's just about that wonderful spirit of being, turning a great journalist into a great, a great man, and a great, uh, a great character for all of us. He's very inspiring. I think Jamie is just a, a standard bearer for all that is good in journalism. He's ethical, he's respected, he's serious. He's just the best of the best, and he's gonna get that voice back, and in a sense, he never really lost it. The WSB listeners are never shy. If they don't like something, they will let you know. I know Jamie was a little antsy about the reaction and we didn't know what to expect. In about the rarest development you can imagine, the response was overwhelming to the point of almost unanimous support and enthusiasm that he was back. I remember only literally one person on Twitter complaining and when they did, Jamie's fans were all over this fellow to the point he had to delete his Twitter account. 
that's how much people loved having Jamie back. The sky's the limit. I mean, you know, uh, Jamie's back on the radio is where he, he should be and where he needs to be. And I think he's excited. I think he's enthused. Um, I know that that excitement has spread amongst the not only the newsroom staff here, but the on-air staff and the people who work in the offices and are familiar with Jamie. There is a, a, great, a great enthusiasm about what the future holds. Um, technology can be a wonderful thing. It's great that we found this stop gap with Jamie Dupree 2.0, but I don't know, I still have hope that Jamie will get his voice back one day. In the meantime, amazing miracle technology allows us to hear him on the radio again and allows him to talk to his kids and his wife Emily. And we continue to be optimistic that at some point, because he's found some really curious physicians, that there's going to be a doctor who's going to crack this code. And I am so thrilled that he's working. I mean, he never stopped working. I mean, most people would have gone out on leave and just, or just fallen into deep depression or figured out, oh my gosh, my life, my career is over. Mm -mm, not Jamie Dupree. He must be one of the most inspiring people I've ever met. And it is, it's a humble honor to be able to call him my friend. When people say I am an inspiration to them, I do appreciate that. But I also think to myself, what other choice do I have right now? Curling up in a ball in the corner of my house is not going to solve anything in my life. Let's be frank about this whole situation. This sucks, but there is no reason to quit. There is no reason to give up. There is no reason to just stop trying. And so I'm not going to stop trying. But among us here today is a man who many of us have known for years, Mr. Jamie Dupree of Cox Media Group. I now invite Jamie Dupree to join me on stage to accept the 2018 Career Achievement Award for Distinguished Reporting on Congress. I'm so honored to get through this, <laughs> that Jamie asked me to deliver his remarks for him. Unfortunately, my voice disappeared over two years ago, and my doctors still have no answer on how to fix it. But I will still walk the halls, interview lawmakers as best I can, and report the news from Capitol Hill going on the radio with my computer-generated Jamie Dupree 2.0 voice. I want to turn it over to Jamie, who is going to try to say a few words. As I do, I just want to say, Jamie, that all of us who've worked with you for decades, and I can speak for myself, and I know a lot of our colleagues here, learn from you the ropes on what it's like to be a really hardworking, shoe-leather reporter, just the facts, working to understand the inner workings of Congress and how a bill gets passed. You taught that to me and so many people. And we are all so grateful, and you will never lose the voice that is inside. And I want to invite you up to come down. Um, um, good, but that's all. I will say, I will never, ever give up. 